Hello, hola. Welcome back to Color in Canvas. Art room still not ready. I've been doing a thousand things today that are not pouring. So I needed to pour something today. So I just mixed some paints, had a kind of a weird idea. I'll explain it to you now. We're gonna do a lid pour. <laughs> this is the lid from the Scotch Guard that I was using earlier. The nearly empty Scotch Guard. I had so many going that I had to keep track. And this was the lid on there. And it's a two piece lid, it has an inner area. So when I emptied that can, I said, let's use this lid for something fun. Let's pour with it. So that's what we're going to do. And I'm using all new things today, new to me anyways. So it's a real experiment. So we're gonna have a little fun. I put an eight by 10 canvas on a turntable. I taped the feet of the canvas to it with a double-sided painter's tape so that it's not gonna fly anywhere. And the paints that I'm using are Pebio Studio Acrylics. They have a little Mexican label on them because we're here in Merida. So I have a Primary Cyan, Primary Magenta, and Primary Yellow. These are my three colors. These are a high viscosity, they're very thick. And so when I mix them just now, I mix them with Floetrol and water. In these little uh, two ounce shot glasses, I put in five grams of paint. 10 grams of Floetrol, two grams of water in the blue, and the yellow was a lot thicker. You can see it's still thicker. I put in five grams of water, so it took twice as much water to get this yellow the same consistency as the blue. And then the pink, I put in just as much paint, and there seems to be less in the cup. Go figure that out, because I used a scale. So, and there was three grams of water to get it to the same consistency, and it's still a little thick. You know what? I want them all exactly the same, so I'll just put a few more drops. So there, so the magenta took four grams of water, roughly. So they were all different. And this is why sometimes when people ask, you know, for exact measurements on the paint, there's not a one-size-fits-all explanation for it. Some colors are more dense, they're gonna take more water, so you can't give a single recipe that goes with all the colors. Um, and I had my Amsterdam Titanium White. This was, it's a lot less paint, four grams of paint, 12 grams of Floetrol, and just a little bit of water. It didn't take much, just maybe one gram, not even, because I mixed a lot less white, because I wasn't sure that I was going to use it. Uh, I have a white base coat here. This is Montmartre White. I buy it in like these great big two liter bottles. It's not a very pigmented paint, it, uh, but it's fantastic for base coats. This I mixed with Floetrol and water. I couldn't tell you exactly. It was one part paint, one and a half parts Floetrol because I wouldn't dilute it too much more than that. And a little bit of water. And it's pretty thin. It's not as thin as the other paints. And I'm gonna leave it like that. So here we go. Let's see what we're going to do. I'm going to first just pour a little bit of base coat on here. And rather than spinning it, I'm just going to tilt it. Just tilt it out. And I will worry about spreading that paint out after we get the rest of the colors down. Okay, now we gotta fill this little cup. I'm gonna move this over. How are we gonna fill this cup? Well, <laughs> who knows? I'm gonna put a wee bit of white there and on the outside, and I'm gonna swirl it around so that there's white left. And I think I'm gonna mix these, I'm gonna let these blend in. So I'm gonna pour them from up high. They're really thin, almost like a Dutch pour thin. Like when I say thin, super duper thin. So let's just see what happens <laughs> with this. I'm having fun just doing something really weird. You know, sometimes you just wanna play with it see what'll happen. There's no plan. You haven't done it before. I've seen people do cups in cups, but 
not with this little lid off the uh, scotch guard can so <laughs> so I'm having fun I'm having fun I'm gonna fill the whole thing there let's see if anything interesting happens when it comes out I put some tape on the bottom because there was this little air hole in it and frankly I think it leaked because there's paint down there so it's either that I spilled or the tape leaked but either way not to worry I'm going to pour it from up high it's really weird and I'm just gonna turn the canvas turn the turntable a little bit as it pours in I loved the outside of it a lot. I should have stopped pouring when the more prominent colors started coming out of the bottom because there was less. But you know what? Let's work with what we've got. Let's just go and work with what we have, although it's so fluid and pretty out there. Hmm. Look at all these cells. These really, really strange cells. I'm not sure how I like this. And, and to be honest with you, I'm not sure how, how I like how this has come out. So I'm just going to spread this little white here. And I'm going to decide what we're going to do with it in the meantime. I'm not loving it. What can I say? I have to be honest, right? I'm not loving it at all. The way that this looks in the middle. Let's just let that paint expand a bit and see what we have. And then we'll decide. It's really weird. I don't love this yellow part. But I love all the outside part was amazing. All the inside part is not amazing. So I'm going to do something that I did before, which was really strange. Is I'm rather than blowing all this paint out, I'm going to blow all this paint in. So here we go. And now what do we have? We have a canvas with a ton of paint in the middle. A ton of paint in the middle. And lock is on and some air bubbles, which we will burst. Got a little close. I scorched the paint a bit there. Did you see that? But that's okay. You know what? Maybe I'll do a few more little scorches. Let's see like a face there. And now I'm going to spin it out and let all of this fluidity go to the edges. Here we go. There's definitely a face of a creature in the middle. Oh, that is so cool. But there's too much paint on here. We gotta keep spinning. Here we go. Wow, I love this. <laughs> I know it's so strange, but I can see the creature there. I can see him and I don't want to mess it up. But I believe there is still way too much paint on here. There's a lot of paint still on here. So let's spin again. Right there, do you see him? He's got a big eye. 
It's like a tongue coming out, like a frog or a lizard or something. That's what I see anyways. <laughs> That's what I'm seeing right now. And I think he's really, really cool. Um, I'm going to blow the paint out to the edge there. Controlled. I don't want that white corner, but I don't want to blow any more of the center out because I kind of like it. What I will do is pick up a few drops of what's come off here and add it before we blow off the rest of the paint. like that corner. A little bit of white on there is all right. It's really weird. It's really weird and it's really quite wonderful. And I think I'm going to leave it this way. I want to see how it dries. This could be a really fun one to embellish at a later time especially with that clear face right there of that lizard creature. That could be a rainy day project for sure. Figuring out who that guy is and making him come to life, maybe with some paint pens or something, I haven't decided. But I think it's gonna be really cool either way when it's done. So let's leave it just like this. And let me give that a torch ever so slightly. There's going to be some little pops of white coming out from that base coat. Not too much actually, pretty good. It's pretty good. But when I see a, a dot go somewhere that I don't want it, I just sink it like that. I just poke through. The rest of the paint will fill in around it. See that? Just like that. And then your white dot is gone. If you have tons of them, it's a bit of a problem. You'll be here for an hour as the paint is drying, arguing with it. But if there's just a few, it's a really, really easy solution to getting rid of those. Kind of like that bubble there. I'm going to leave that. Yeah, this is cool. This is going to be a real fun one to work on at a later time. All right. I will show you the dried one at the end of the video, and thanks for watching again, as always. And I encourage you, no matter how busy you are, find a few minutes, go uh, <laughs> Just like me, I still have a thousand things to do on the list. When you have a new house, there's never, you know, your work is never done. So uh, just go paint, do something fun, you know, relax, right? Painting is my happy place, and I hope it's your happy place too. And I go enjoy, and have a wonderful day. Bye-bye.